Now let's look at a workbook on uh, drying time calculation. So here is the problem. A porous solid is dried in a batch dryer under constant drying condition. 3.2 hours are required to reduce the moisture content from 35% to 21%. The critical moisture content is 20% and the equilibrium moisture content is 4%. Assuming that the rate at falling rate period is proportional to the free moisture, how long will it take to dry the sample to 5%? Now that's the typical scenario where many of the parameters are unknown. However, they have some information that to dry from this moisture content to that moisture content, that many hours are required, then they need to figure out how much time will be required to dry to another final value of the moisture content. So for case A, 3.2 hours is required to dry from 35% to 21% moisture. Now look at this, the equilibrium moisture content is 4% and the critical moisture content is 20%. So in the first case, it was dried above the critical moisture content. For the second case, you have to dry to a value less than the critical moisture content. Now do remember one thing is that all these values are given in terms of total moisture. So that you need to keep in mind. Now we're given the critical moisture is 20%, equilibrium moisture is 4%. So we need to calculate time to record to dry from 35% to 5% total moisture. Now we have this equation, TT equals MS over ARC X1 minus XC plus XC ln XC over X2. Now for the first case, X2 is greater than Xc, so we have the simplified equation, meaning th this term is not there, also it's x1 minus x2. However, we don't know either of these three ms, a or r, c. Now we can estimate the whole term ms over arc from the first case calculation because tt is given for this case and then you can use that for our second case. So one thing remember that we need to convert the moisture content to free moisture. The initial value of the total moisture is 35%. So that's 0 0.35 and equilibrium moisture is 0 0.044 percent so that gives the initial value of the free moisture to be 31 percent so for the first case the x2 was 0 0.21 percent so that's 0 0.21 0 0.04 so that's 0 0.17 and for xc we have this value 20 percent so 0 0.2 0 minus 0 0.04 to 0 0.16. Now if you simply plug in those values, TT was given to be 3.2 hours, X1 was 0 0.31 and X2 was 0 0.17. So this will give us MS over ARC to be 22.86 hour times mass solid over mass moisture. Now for case 2, we have x1 and xc to be the same, however x2 is different here. x2 is here 5% so 0 0.05. So in terms of free moisture, this will be 0 0.01. Now simply we know the value of ms over rc. And if we plug in those numbers, so that's 22.86 hour and x1 is again 0 0.31, xc is 0 0.16 plus 0 0.16 ln xc over ln x2, 0 0.01. So that gives a value of 13.6 hour. Now here is another workbook problem on calculation of drying rate and drying time. So we have been asked to dry a filter cake 1 meter by 0 0.5 meter with thickness 5 centimeter and dry density of 1.9 kilogram per liter. Now the initial moisture content is 27 percent. You need to dry it to a final moisture content of 6 percent total moisture. The available air has a dry bulb temperature of 72 degrees centigrade and a wet bulb temperature of 27 degrees centigrade. The critical moisture content is 10% and the equilibrium moisture content under this condition is 1%. The air flows parallel to the cake surface on both sides at a velocity 3 meter per second. Now how long will it take to dry the cake? The drying can be considered to be proportional to the moisture content for the declining rate period. 
the equivalent diameter can be taken as 0 0.25 meter. So most of the information are given here and just to interpret some of the information is that the weight bulb temperature temperature that when air becomes saturated with moisture so that's the condition it's we consider at the surface of the solid where the air that comes in contact with the solid it becomes saturated with moisture so then we consider the weight bulb temperature of the air to be the temperature at the surface of the solid now for this case we are given this information the cake dimensions are given length width and height and the dry density is given also the initial moisture content the final moisture content critical moisture content and the equilibrium moisture content is given so for air the dry bulb temperature and wet bulb temperature is here and the velocity is also given now we need to calculate the time required for drying that is t t so for this case again x2 is less than xc so you need to use this equation However, for this case, we don't know Rc. And in order to estimate Rc, we can estimate it using this equation because Rc is def as rate of change of vapor over A. And we have seen in the previous case that Mb, rate of vaporization, can be taken as Hy T minus Ti over lambda i. So that's the latent heat at the initial uh, at the interface so times a so if we divide mv by a you get hy t minus ti over lambda i so that gives the rate during the constant rate period now to get hy we need to use this equation now here we need the reynolds number and the parent number so the steps will be you need to calculate the Reynolds number, Prandtl number from his, we get the Nusselt number and HY and then we can calculate RC and we can calculate this time required. So first step is to calculate the Reynolds number and the Prandtl number. So we know the definition of Reynolds number is D equivalent V rho over mu where all these are properties of air and D equivalent is given. So for air, the for the density of viscosity at 72 degrees centigrade. So density can be obtained from using the ideal gas property where it says that one mole of the of an ideal gas has a volume of 22.4 liter so that's 29 kilogram per kilomole for air so that's 22.4 liter and you need to do a correction for the temperature because that value is at 20, 273 degree kelvin meaning zero degree centigrade so current temperature is 72 degree centigrade means 72 plus 273 degree kelvin so if you use this correction factor over here you get the density of water to be 1.02 kilogram per meter cube now the viscosity of air can also be obtained from given from viscosity table which is given as 0 0.0204 centipoise or 0 0.0204 times 10 to the 3 kilogram per meter second now we simply plug in these values the Reynolds number where d e is given as 0 0.25 meter V is given as 3 meter per second. So rho is given as 1.02 kilogram per meter cube. And this mu is given as 0 0.0204 times 10 to the power negative 3 kilogram per meter second. So we'll end up getting a value of 37.5 times. 10 to the power 3. That's the value of the Reynolds number. Now, Prandtl number can be obtained directly from the given conditions of air. So, that's from a Prandtl number table, you can get this value to be 0 0.69. So, if you simply plug in these values in this equation and do the calculation, you get up, you get a Nusselt number value to be 149.5. Also, the K value for air can be obtained from table. So for air at 72 degrees centigrade, K is given as some value like 0 0.0297 watt per meter per degree centigrade. Now if you simply plug in the value of Nusselt number, K value and the DE, you will get HY value to be something like 17.77 watt per meter square per degree centigrade. Now when you get HY, 
you can get the value of RC. So RC plug in the value of HY there and you know T is for our case 72 degrees centigrade and TI is 27 degrees centigrade. So those are the dry bulb and wet bulb temperature. I mean dry bulb temperature is simply the temperature of the air and the wet bulb temperature is the temperature of the air at the interface. And we get the latent heat for water at 27 degrees centigrade to be this in terms of joule per kilogram. And you convert watt to kilojoule per second and you'll get up, get up you'll get RC value to be 328 times 10 to the negative 6 kilogram second per meter square. Now if you have this value, you can calculate TT using the equation described earlier. For that you need the solid volume. Now for the solid volume, we have this 1 meter times 0 0.5 meter times 0 0.25 meter. And the dry volume was given as 1.9 kilogram per liter. And you simply do the conversion, the mass of solid will get something like 47.5 kilogram. Now regarding the area, simply because the as the cake it, cake is dried from both sides, so we'll have an area to be two times one meter times 0 0.5 meter. This gives us one meter square. So remember that if you have a material something like this, so air is being blown from the top side and that from the bottom side. So those two areas should be calculated giving a total area of one meter square. Now for this case also we get the x1, x2 values in terms of the free moisture something like this and simply plug again this equation you should get a value of 9.22 hour. Let's plug in the values of ms, a and rc and we know x1, xc and, and x2. So just simply plug in this value, we'll get a value of 9.22 hour. The third problem here, uh, again, if you take 24 inch and two inch supported on a screen is dried from both sides with the air with a wet bulb temperature of 80 degree Fahrenheit, dry bulb temperature of 160 degree Fahrenheit. The air flows parallel with the faces of the cake at a velocity is given. The dry density of the cake is also given. The equilibrium moisture content is negligible under the conditions of drying. The critical moisture content is 9%. What is the drying rate during the constant rate period? And how long would it take to dry this material from an initial moisture content of 20% to a final moisture content of 10%? So equivalent diameter is given as 6 inch. So for this case, just take a look and compare it with the previous problem and try to figure out how to solve it. It's almost a similar problem as the first one. Thank you.